Hello and welcome to another video from Alberta Bushcrafter. This is the second half of the video I was doing on organizing your food bag and other containers and so on. So basically add-ons to your camp kitchen. So we're going to continue right now with a little more on that topic. I know previously we covered basically containers, containers and more containers. Uh, this was going to focus a little more on other things, including the food bag itself. And there's a few options for that. You'll see pretty clearly what my favorite is. Alright, so let's get started. Okay, whittle down a bit of this. A couple other things. Very often with the Nalgene bottle you get the straight flat lid. Those are okay, but I don't like them too much. This is another human gear product. It's the uh, cap cap. The nice thing is you can take it right off for filling, but it's just got a little ordinary smaller lid for, you know, for whatever. The other one I like to use is my old MSR. So you can see this is actually the same thing. You can take the whole cap off for filling, but there's a valve here and it comes off. Nice to have something more than the basic lid for your Nalgene or Clean Canteen. I've tried these on the Clean Canteen and they both work. Uh, not heat proof by the way. But they're a nice option. You get a hydration tube through there with a bit of fuss it won't fall out. So there's those. And of course the uh, cup. Found out with my uh, my bottle cooking kit. Actually with the clean canteen I had it like this and it was sticking in the bottom of the pouch. Yeah, just put it on top. Everything fits. The cup comes out first instead of last. You can see a post on that but I figured I'd tell you in the video as well. Okay, we are moving right along. Now, Okay, other things. Now you've seen this. This is also nice to have. This is a collapsible fair share mug. So it's a collapsible version of the one we saw earlier. I've already described it. Into the roughneck box it goes. Now we're going to talk about just a few other things and we're done. Okay, it's often a nice idea, depending on what, what kind of filter you have, to actually have something spare for water and this is actually one of the GSI water bottles this actually goes with my water filter I'll carry it as extra water as an emergency but it's very very lightweight and the neat thing about it is it folds up to almost nothing we'll see that in another video another one that's interesting to carry if you can get your hands on one always have stuff sacks lots of them. This is a neat one I also bring with me because it weighs next to nothing. It's funny you keep saying, oh it weighs next to nothing and you add everything up and it weighs a fair bit. This is a collapsible nylon water bucket. It weighs about a tenth of what those canvas buckets are like that the traditionalists like to use. Nice thing is, it's got a couple carry handles. You fill this up it's a few liters of water. Use it for washing your hands or, your, or just a spare supply. And just like the cover from my pack, it snugs right down. So it just fits in one of these stuffs. So you can just stuff it. You don't even have to roll it. But one of these are handy for carrying water from your water source to your camp kitchen or your camp. That's it. This bucket is with me all the time. So, water sources are good. Extra containers for water besides what you're packing in your in your uh, food bag are great. Now, one of the other things I like, if I can pick it up off the floor here, very often I've got these little solo meals. That's not a solo meal, that's hash browns. That's dried. But it is nice to have. Oh, I'm not going to have that. Um, 
Stuff sacks are a good idea. Whether they're the little mesh bags I just had there, and all the way up. You can actually organize your breakfast, lunch, dinner in different colored sacks, assuming you've got them. And then these other ones are nice for the little bottles. This is uh, not made anymore, actually. This is the Mech uh, Pack Rat Diddy Bag. It seems to be out of production. They still sell them at Mount Equipment Co-op, but they're getting scarce. So what you would do in this case, and this is a neat little feature, this is one of their... Uh, oh, that's a 7 liter. That's too big. This is one of their silicone stuff sacks. Nice thing about Mech is they've got the size on it. This is a 5 liter. This would be a fair bit of food. I organize my food by putting the food in the bag, usually a smaller bag. And then just like any dry bag, you would roll up the bag. First you flatten all the air out of it. Then you roll it up. Click the top, and there it is. It's an interesting color of green, isn't it? This is sulfur. Again, I don't think Mount Equipment Co-op is currently making these anymore. But, yeah, so you actually organize, I organize mine with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks. And then I've got another one just for staples. So I've got a good few of these. You can almost never have too many stuff sets. One of the last things you want to think about in your, uh, in your food bag, in your food kit, are, well, cleaning really. I mean, this is actually a Coleman camp soap. I prefer the camp suds. Might have a video on doing an actual test between these and the camp suds. And I want to even see if they're, uh, if they're necessary, because they're both very expensive compared to your basic dishwashing liquid. We'll discuss that in another video. In any case, though, it's always nice to pack an extra nylon scrubber, scotch Bright pad, whatever you want to call it. Now these, there's a lot of complaints that, oh, they hold bacteria and whatever. No, you just dip this in boiling water with a couple drops of bleach, and it's good as new. These will eventually wear down. Some outdoor books suggest just toss it in the fire when you're done. Well, there's some places you can't have a fire. So that's where you also carry another essential piece of gear. And that is a Ziploc freezer bag. So when this thing is done, and you'll know because they're just going to become like threadbare, you toss it in your, you toss it in here, in your freezer bag. All of your, um, all of your little bags for your freeze-dried food or any, any other bags you've kept stuff in, uh, food saver bags, whatever. You can compress them down very small and throw them in one of these. It's a trash bag. You could even, if you wanted, Throw this inside one of these, which are also compressible. Right. So, I know it's not really a leave no trace, uh, an ideal leave no trace practice to burn nylon and other garbage in your fire pit. I know it's still done, and I know sometimes the leave no trace principles can be just a little restrictive. I also know that some people kind of figure that they're the leave no trace police. Um, that actually contradicts the seventh rule of leave no trace, which is basically be courteous to other campers, meaning don't shove LNT principles down your throat. I love irony. It's fun. So this, again, if you've got a fire going, people will burn down. I pack out all my trash whatsoever. Another thing, good thing to have, and you can modify these, um, I have seen the pack towel and other similar items go for 20 or 30 bucks. And they are basically one of these microfiber chamois that you can get, a big one for five bucks with a little loop of nylon on the side. And sometimes a snap. Well, I've got some gear. I may make the actual DIY pack towel in the near future. But as it is, this is a nice thing to have. This is a microfiber cloth, absorbs a lot of liquid. It's always nice to have a spare. Good little emergency sponge and other things. 
And the last thing I like here is these. You can buy expensive ones, but you go to Walmart or Canadian Tire or some big box store. This is a J cloth. Very tiny. You know, doesn't weigh almost anything. So what you do is take the cover off, you throw it in the water and it expands up. And you've got an emergency dishcloth or an extra dishcloth. It does not compress back down. So it's a good idea to have your freezer bag and maybe a few other uh, Ziploc bags as well. So we have covered a lot here today. Now we're going to show you one last thing. All right. So we've seen all the different options and so on for packing your food bag. Let's look at the food bag itself. So one of my favorites is actually right here. This is a dry bag. And you can get dry bags in polyurethane coated. Uh, the older ones are PVC. They don't often make those anymore for environmental reasons. Because, you know, outdoorsmen can be a very environmental bunch. Uh, the other ones you can get are very much like the stuff sacks I showed you. They're sil, sil nylon. In fact, you can use those stuff sacks as a food bag if you wanted to. They're just not terribly durable. They are fairly waterproof if they're tightened down well enough. And that's how these guys work. I prefer these to the sil nylon sacks because, well, the advantages are they're fairly durable. You know, it's a pretty heavy duty bag. Not as heavy duty as a few years ago, but still pretty good. The sil nylon bags, you stick it on a, you know, you, you plunk it down over a stick or some uh, rocks or, you know, even some sharp grass bits and they can puncture. And they're no longer waterproof. It defeats the purpose. So let's have a look at one of these. I will sometimes use the waterproof sil nylon bags inside the pack. But one of the things you want to watch about that is the main reason for having a food bag in the first place or some kind of other food container you can separate from your pack is you don't want anything chewing through the side of your tent or clawing through the side of your tent in bear country to get at food that's in your tent in your pack most books i've read and sites i've read and so on on uh on bear camping and just backcountry camping they all suggest get the food out of the sleeping area, out of your camping area. You set your kitchen up. Uh, I've heard anywhere from 75 to 200 feet. Um, I tend to go more for the latter. It's also very much in the leave no trace courses and so on. What you don't want to do is you don't want, if they can smell it, they'll go through it. I've actually had uh, a camping partner of mine had a squirrel go right through the side of his thousand denier pack and just ripped a hole in it, got at the food, shredded everything, shredded some other gear in the process, and pooped all over the inside of the pack, and no one likes that. So, yeah, you don't want food in your pack that animals can smell. And that's where these come in. This is just a 5 liter. This is the Mountain Equipment Co-op Brooks bag. It's PVC free. They make it from 5 to 55 liters, and it's a great little bag. This one, though, I'll use for solo trips, small trips. As you can see, it's not huge. There's always complaints with a lot of these bags, so take it with a grain of salt. This is about as big as it gets. Well, we'll pack something in it and see. If I can make it fit. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, I got a few things I can stuff in here. Give you a general idea. Actually, put my stuff sacks in there and bulk it out. All right, so you got like so. This could take a bit more. Then all you do is pull the top together. One. Want to get the air out of it first. So give it a hug. Everybody needs a hug. One, two, three. And you're pretty good. It over goes the buckle. built-in handle there. There's also on the mech ones there's this loop and that can be used to keep the Velcro. The Velcro strap that ties it together and I've got it backwards. I often do get it backwards. It's just the way I am. So in there, like so, you can now strap this to the, um, you can hang it in a tree if you want. Not in bear country because a lot of folks call these bear piñatas now. 
But this could go over the gunnel, not the gunnel, the uh, yoke of your canoe or a tie down point or something. This is handy for solo trips for a few days. Larger trips, you want a 10 liter. Same principle. I'm going to try something here and see if we make it fit. No, I'll need a 20 for that one. I have these in a few different sizes, usually 5, 10, and 20 liters. I like to compress them down a fair bit. And the nice thing about these is that while they may be a little grabby on the inside of your pack, they will do a fairly good job of keeping everything waterproof. Now this is not, I wouldn't carry that much except on a more extended trip. But here's the 10 liter. And again, I've had these for a season. I've slammed them against rocks and dropped them around and they're still good. Filled them up with water to see if they leak. But there, again, need a larger pack for this. But that works. And you've seen this. This is my camp kitchen. It's the one I usually take on bigger trips. Now this will either stay in my pack or in some cases, I'll see if I can make it work. No, I need a bigger bag. Well, we'll use another bag to show how this works. Wait. Cozy's nice, but there's too much in it. So we'll see if it takes the camp set only. There we go. Bless them with these a bit. Okay. And this would be an extended trip here. It's light enough that you can carry it by hand. Or if you've got, like myself, you have a nice external frame pack, which is in another video coming up. You know, they fold up nice. They're quite large. There is a big food bag, kitchen, everything all in one. So this again is for extended trips. And you can get them bigger, you can get them a 30, 35, and 55 liter. So there are some food bags, which are good. If everything inside the food bag is sealed and it's in one of these, pretty well odor-proof. The other and last choice, you have seen this in other videos. This is the smaller one of the two. I am currently making another larger one. This is a three gallon bucket with, oh, it's sealed nicely. Again, a seal lid. You can see in there, that's plenty of food. Now this, I will bring, probably wrap the handle in something actually. Or build a nylon, you can build a nylon harness for these as well. For hanging or whatever. These, it's hard to say if they're bear proof. If you do the trick I did with the, the DIY video on these, they are odor proof and I've used them now. And they've, I've never had any anything crawl around it. So again, big bucket with a gamma seal lid. You might want to paint this a different color, I plan to. That's another food bag. Again, you can use a you know, separate duffel bag, but why? No, yeah, why? It's up to you. So those are add-ons and choices and so on for your food bag and add-ons for your kitchen. This has been another video from Alberta Bushcrafter. I want to thank you very much for watching. My, my name is uh, Dean. Take care and good day.